Hi there everyone and welcome to today's video. In this video we'll be talking about the on hold functionality uh, within Business Central in the purchase ledger. So um, what is the uh, on hold uh, functionality? Well it's uh, basically some functionality that allows us to put uh, a transaction on hold uh, in most circumstances, uh, I guess it's going to be uh, an invoice uh, on your purchase ledger, which is put on hold for whatever reason. Uh, maybe it's a dispute or something uh, similar to that. Um, but it's basically going to mean that the invoice is not by default paid on the payment run. Okay, so um, the on hold field is on the vendor ledger entry. So if I come up to my search, and just search for um, vendor ledger entries here. Um, we basically have a field called on hold. Just waiting for that to catch up. Um, and if I scroll to the right here, you'll see I've got an on hold field here. Okay, so um, first thing that I should mention is although this is the vendor ledger entries page, you can go into edit list and modify the on hold. Okay, so here you can see um, against this invoice for vendor number 50,000, um, it is still outstanding. So you can see the original amount was 10,942.56 and the remaining amount is still the same. Okay, so that invoice is still outstanding. Um, it's actually overdue there as well, look. Um, but um, here I can go in and I can modify the value of the on hold field and just bear in mind here you do only have three characters in this field um, so um, just just be weary with what you're what you're going to put in there maybe you've got some sort of a business process which means you use a particular value um, you know it means something um, within the business um, but it's just a total of three characters in there okay um, and there's no sort of validation or anything like that. So you can put any three characters in there. Um, and what happens is, is basically where the on hold, um, where the on hold field is marked uh, with a value in there, um, you'll basically see that that does not get pulled through to our payment run. Okay, so when we use suggest vendor payments, um, any invoice with that value in there um, does not come through to the payment run. So we'll, we'll go into that in a second, but if I just step back here, I just wanna show you that you can populate the on hold field quite early on in the purchase ledger process. I mean, you may not want to, but just as an FYI, you can. So if I come into a purchase quote, which I've got on the system here, we've got the on hold um, field here, which we can use to pop an invoice on hold. Okay, so we know this is a purchase quote. Um, but eventually down the line, it's going to turn into a purchase order and then into a purchase invoice. Um, and if you want to, you've got the same field here to put those characters in. Okay, so again, I've put one, two, three in here. It's only three characters, as we saw with the, the same field on the vendor ledger entries. So you can populate that here on your purchase quote. And uh, guys, I won't show you on uh, all of the, the different screens in BC, but the same option is available on other documents that you'd expect. OK, so you can put that in on a purchase order, a blanket PO, a uh, purchase invoice, um, and it's basically going to transfer onto the posted document and then onto the vendor ledger entries. So let's just go back to our vendor ledger entries and we'll see what the implications are of filling in that field, okay? So let me go into vendor ledger entries and I'm gonna go edit this and we'll just use the um, same invoice that we were on earlier here for vendor number 50,000. It's invoice number 108202. And I'm gonna come across here and I'm just gonna put in a number one in the on hold, okay? So um, that invoice is now on hold. Bear in mind, I did this directly on the vendor ledger entries, but you can, as I said earlier, do that from the originating document. And in fact, of course, you can edit it here on the vendor ledger entries if you did have it on the originating document. 
So now what we'll do is let's go into our payment journal and we'll just go ahead and create a payment run. Okay, so let me go prepare, suggest vendor payment. So I'll just do this quickly here. We do have um, other videos um, on uh, this suggest vendor payments where we go into it in a little bit more detail. But just for now, I'm gonna rush through and fill in my report request page. I filtered to vendor number 50,000 just to make the results a little bit easier to see. Um, but if I go in and say, okay, what we see here is we've got a single transaction. Sorry, let me just check. Did I summarize per vendor? No. Okay, so we've got a single line here and look, it's for the payment of invoice 107 200. Okay, so that's the, uh, the other invoice that we have uh, against um, that vendor, but we didn't see that invoice that I put on hold. Okay, so um, what we'll do now is just to prove that it works um, in the way that I've said is we're gonna delete this line and let's go back to our vendor ledger entries and we will remove that on hold field from the vendor ledger entry. Okay, so I'm going into that 10K invoice here and let's go edit list and I'm gonna remove that on hold value now, okay? So the on hold field is now blank against that invoice. So we'll do the same thing again. Let's go into our payment journal. Let's go prepare, suggest vendor payments, and it's vendor number 50,000, and we're not summarizing. Let me say okay. And see, this time we have two lines come through, and if I scroll, to the right here, there is our invoice 108202 for 10942.56. And uh, that came through this time, guys, because I removed the on hold value within the vendor ledger entries. Um, and that's really, guys, how that field works. Okay, so just to summarize, um, you can populate the on hold field uh, on purchase documents before you get to the vendor ledger entries, it will just trail through. It will follow through on those transactions through to the vendor ledger entries. But on the vendor ledger entries themselves, you can modify the on hold field. Um, but if the on hold field has anything populated in it whatsoever, um, those transactions will not come through on your suggest vendor payments run. Now, I guess just for good practice, it's maybe a good idea to set up a, uh, a view on your vendor ledger entries. So I can come in here and I can say filter list by on hold is not equal to blank. And then I can put on other ones of you know where uh, a document type is invoice and where maybe open is equal to yes. Okay, so that will show you if you've got any open invoices and they are on hold okay just in case i guess it does happen where you put an invoice on hold and you may forget to put that off hold at some point in the future um so maybe a good idea to save that as a view if you're thinking of using this functionality so um that's really everything i wanted to show you guys uh, have a play in uh, the uh, sandbox environment and uh, let me know if you have any questions and uh, thanks for watching guys i'll see you on the next one